Hello, everybody. Welcome to our next fabulous live webinar for America's Small Business Development Center at the College of New Jersey. Thank you for joining me. This is the presentation of Broadcast Your Message to the World, Understanding Periscope, and Other Live Streaming Apps. I'm Shakira Brown, award-winning PR and marketing expert. I provide affordable public relations and marketing through my company, SMB Strategic Media, uh, and I work exclusively with small businesses. I am also a marketing consultant with America's Small Business Development Center at the College of New Jersey. I have over 20 years of mass communications experience, 16 doing public relations and a mix of other marketing with branding and search engine optimization and uh, website development, content development, and social media management. And that brings us to today's topic. The America Small Business Development Center provides you topics uh, like this, uh, in part due to the fact that they are sponsored by or supported by the U.S. SBA, the state of New Jersey, and Mercer County. We provide services of counseling at no cost and also webinars like this because of this support that we have from these three entities. So if you're a Mercer County business and you have not taken advantage of the Small Business Development Center yet, you definitely should. You can get access to a lot of advisory services. Um, and I, I, I underscore the advisory services. We help you do your job better. Okay, so that's a reason why you should use this. And it, it costs you nothing. Um, and most of our events and presentations are at no cost. So let's talk about some of our partners. Of course, I've mentioned the SBA, and uh, we are, our host school is the College of New Jersey. You know, we work with banks like Bank of America, Wells Fargo. We also have relationships with the Mid Jersey Chamber of Commerce, as well as the Princeton Chamber of Commerce. And you know, the, the logo you see here is for the Independent Business Alliance through the Princeton Chamber, as well as the NJBIA, um, and of course the county and the state and Rutgers. So we're going to move forward with the agenda. The overview uh, of Periscope is going to be the first thing that we do. The second part is going to be steps to get started with Periscope. And then the third part is something that I felt I had to do because since we started uh, putting together a calendar of webinars, a couple of other live streaming tools have popped up. And I'm just going to give you like a touch on those just so you know, you know kind of what's hot. Uh, live streaming is such a moving target at this point, so it really is difficult to keep up with everything because uh, things are coming and going very quickly. But before we move forward, I want to do a little bit of housekeeping. If you have any questions or uh, comments, please use the questions box or the chat box uh, available to you in the control panel. That's that floating kind of grid with you can see your name and everything. At the very bottom, you see uh, uh, chat. And then there's also an area where you can ask questions. In addition, if you're watching this live, um, you can also download the handouts that we made available. We have some upcoming events and presentations that we'd love for you to take part in. So again, for live participants, uh, please uh, take a look at those handouts. And also in the chat box, uh, I added some information about an upcoming event in uh, very soon. Thank you. So let's get started with the basics. What is Periscope? That's a good question, right? I, I get this question actually all of the time. And Periscope basically is a, a free, I'm going to say that again, free live streaming mobile application that allows users to view and broadcast what we call scopes, which is just your, you know, your, your live recording, from around the world in real time. Okay? So this means that now you're a broadcaster. You are a network. You are someone who is able to do these things on your own without having to worry about getting anybody fancy uh, to do things for you. So, you know, this is a really great opportunity for you to, for anyone really, to stream live video. So make sure that you take advantage of it. Uh, anyone can stream uh, using their mobile device, uh, a GoPro Hero 4, which is a special uh, GoPro camera, um, which is, and that's on the iPhone. I need to say that. Uh, and GoPro uh, made this arrangement earlier this year. They have this deal with with uh, Twitter and Periscope um, to uh, be able to for the GoPro to actually stream activities from 
the device right into the iPhone. But they do caution that you, of course, keep your phone secure. I say also keep yourself secure too. Be safe when you're using your GoPro. And then viewers can watch live scopes in the Periscope app on their mobile device, uh, Twitter, or Apple TV. Uh, you're able to do uh, Periscope also on uh, other mobile, other than a smartphone. You could do it on like a an Android or iPhone uh, device um, that's like an iPad or one of the one of the other the uh, Android kind of uh, pad related. Uh, devices. Uh, Periscope was acquired by Twitter in January of 2015, and I can see that a lot has happened since then. Um, some, some great integrations have come forward with, the, with this alliance. Um, also, some other players in the live streaming space have gone away. Uh, there was another live streaming that you may have heard of last year called Meerkat, and that was sort of like, that was the hot thing, and then Periscope got acquired, and then boom. Uh, as of earlier this year, Meerkat has shut down. Uh, so that is no longer available to you. So you can broadcast your own virtual events live. So an example is imagine that a real estate agent wants to show an open house to an audience of people who aren't able to actually physically be there. Think about in terms of someone who's looking to relocate from another state. Now a real estate agent can show them a full open house and they can get that experience and they can even interact by answering questions. So we're going to talk about how you interact on Periscope and live streaming in general. Um, also, uh, you can easily live stream a product launch to tens of thousands of people because you're not only live streaming on Periscope to people who follow you, people can actually discover your broadcast in Periscope. If they go in there and they can actually see that. So we're going to talk more about that. Uh, another thing that we can do is that a single company can extend beyond borders and oceans, which is really amazing. So another, uh, if you can look at these um, images that I have here, the images that are available here, there's an image of the Eiffel Tower, and this is a beautiful image, and this is a, a lovely thing to show, and this is someone who evidently was on a boat floating by uh, the Eiffel Tower. Uh, but one of the things that uh, happens with, with these live streaming apps is that people are now becoming even more what has been termed citizen journalists. During some uh, major news events in recent times, they've been able to show uh, what's going on uh, in the world and a little bit better than what the news agencies because it's, it's one person with a phone and it's not a, a crew. And they have more access. So it's really been uh, amazing. So why should you get started on Periscope? Well, I can give you a few reasons here. Uh, it's really a great opportunity for businesses of all sizes to uh, use Periscope app. You can increase awareness to new audiences, obviously. But this is something, again, that you're, you're, you're going to be broadcasting to the world. So it's really uh, get opening you up to a new audience. Um, and it, you provided, it provides you with an instant connection with the community and, and anyone else who can see it. Remember, the world. Uh, drive traffic to your website. And that's a way that you can do that verbally during your scopes. You can have a banner or a sign behind you um, while you're scoping. Um, that points to your address. And of course, just telling people to go there to find more information or to tease something that's there. It's a great way to drive traffic because you've already got them engaged, right? So you can create buzz around a new product or service. Um, and also you can uh, build a more personal connection because viewers can watch and interact with you in real time. So here is Periscope, what I call unwrapped. And uh, yesterday, uh, some information came out from um, Twitter related to their stocks. And they announced that they've, they have more than 310 million monthly active users. That is an incredible number. So that means there are 310 million possible viewers of your broadcast, okay? And these users can interact live with the broadcaster by sending chats, comments, tapping on the screen to send hearts. We're going to talk about all this stuff later. Um, there's also replays are available on Periscope for 24 hours after the live stream. Um, you can record your broadcast, and we're going to talk about that on your phone. And you can also even geotag your videos to anybody who uh, 
wants if you want to target a certain area or you want people in your area to find your broadcast. The fun fact is that since it launched, there have been over a hundred million broadcasts um, in the Periscope app, which is quite amazing. So new for 2016, your scope auto plays right within Twitter. Okay. So before when you had, uh, a, if you sent a tweet from Periscope, and we are going to talk about that, you would, uh, you'd just be sending a tweet, and then they'd have to enter into the Periscope app. But in January, Periscope announced that they had integrated the, uh, the broadcast to actually display within a tweet that you send on your Twitter account, and then anybody, people who are following you or people who, who for the first time are discovering your profile, are able to access your video without a Periscope app and without having a Periscope account. So before, you had to be connected to Periscope in some way, but now Twitter is now a platform for Periscope broadcasts, which is pretty amazing. So let's talk about broadcasting your first Periscope. Now, I have sat through other people's presentations over the last year because uh, everybody needs a way to ramp up with this stuff. And when I started looking at Periscope as an opportunity last year, um, I, there was one big gaping hole in all the presentations that I looked through and watched. Um, it was about how to get yourself set up to actually scope um, because, number one, you don't want to sit there just holding your phone, right? You want to have a way to do this that's very comfortable, that's going to be sturdy and not, you know, moving around. Um, so the bare basics is obviously you need to have an iOS or Android device, so you can, uh, and, right? You need a data plan and or Wi-Fi. Um, with live streaming, uh, you may have, like when you do a webinar, people say, well, you should have be hardwired in. Well, it's kind of hard to do that on a smartphone. So what I say is you need to have a, a, a very, very uh, capable Wi-Fi bandwidth uh, probably your home Wi-Fi is probably that. Uh, I would say using a free Wi-Fi outside somewhere um, at a, in an event or at a venue um, where everybody else is on there probably isn't going to be that you know, reliable. But if you, And so data plan is the key. So you need to have a great data plan. Otherwise, you could get a lot of extra charges. So if you're going to start doing a lot of scoping, consider uh, upgrading your data plan or, and talking to your provider. Of course, Twitter account is a must. Uh, you can set up Periscope without a Twitter account, but I advise against it. Just if you you should already be engaging on Twitter before you're scoping uh, at the at the bare minimum. Uh, download the Periscope app from your app store. That's a no brainer, right? So here's where you get my secret little tip. Uh, some people um, may have gone out and purchased a twenty five dollar bra phone bracket um, for for their uh, their tripod, which you're going to talk about next. The phone bracket that I use is off of a $5 selfie stick that I bought from Family Dollar. Um, I have told this to clients and other people, and they love, they love this because they looked into the cost of a phone bracket for a tripod, and like I said, it's $20 or $25, and these are uh, quite useful and um, are inexpensive. Even if it breaks, you, know, you spend another 5 bucks. It's not a big deal. So what I'm talking about here is in the picture on the left with the pink handle, that is a selfie stick. And then on the on below it is the is the actual um, right next to the pink uh, area of the selfie stick. You see the bracket. That bracket actually twists off of a selfie stick. Um, so when you buy the selfie stick, before you buy, you want to look to see if it's the twist off bracket type, and most of them are. Um, and then you can literally twist that onto your 60 inch sturdy tripod, and it should be one that can get up as high as 60 inches. Um, and then you can twist that bracket right on top, and that's normally where a camera mount. That's where it goes right on top of the camera mount of the tripod. So you would put that screw on that that uh, that cam that phone bracket um, right onto the top of a uh, on the camera mount of a tripod. So these are all the things that you need. And the reason why I say sturdy tripod is because you know you could buy a the really flimsy kind, but then they may not stay up. They, you know you don't want to be in the middle of a scope and the thing falls to the floor or ground. Um, so I always like the kind kind of with the rubberized feet. And kind of flat so that it stays nice. Um, there's a company I believe is named Targus. They have a couple of them. You can find these at Walmart or uh, any of these staples or anything like that. 
Uh, you can order them online, of course, on Amazon. So definitely uh, take a look at that because that is something that you want to, um, you know, that's really something you want to do. So let's talk about getting set up on Periscope, okay? So the, the best thing for you to do is to sign in. And to do this, um, you're going to choose between connecting with existing Twitter account or creating a brand new account using your, your, your cell phone. Of course, I advise you against the second one. If you, you really should be engaging on Twitter already uh, if you're going to do this at minimum. Uh, be, be on there uh, and have a Twitter account. And then number two is choose your Periscope username. And you can choose a different name than your Twitter account. But again, I, you know, even though I know people like options, so I, I put that in there, but I would advise that you keep everything consistent with your branding. So if you have a name that you're using already on social across various platforms, you should continue to use that. So people, if you have a following, they know who you are. And, you know, start following other scopers and watch their scopes, right? So, that's a really important thing. Watching other periscopers is essential. And so when you, once you log in to Periscope, we're going to talk about, you know, how to find people on, on Periscope to, to follow them and whatnot. But, you know, the type of seasoned scopers you want to look for are probably the, like a celebrity. Um, you're going to look for local news stations and radio stations. They're using it great. Um, I, I looked at Periscope this morning and I was able to see Steve Harvey doing his radio show, but he wasn't didn't look like he was at the radio show. It looked like he was actually um, on a tread, not a treadmill, on a bike, on a bike. So I guess he does his show while working out, which is pretty cool. Um, but that was cool because I didn't know he did that. Uh, so <laughs> you're able to see that. So just take a look. And the best times probably to find some of these seasoned scopers um, are during the week, Monday through Friday in the morning. Um, and you can just see what they do. And uh, I like what the TV news people do. They do a good job at kind of giving you a behind the scenes look. And that's really one, a great way to do that is to, to do a live scope. So before you broadcast, there's a couple of the thing I want you to do is to consider the fact that once you do a periscope, you, you do a first scope, we're going to call them scopes. The, you can watch it for 24 hours within Periscope and obviously now with through the Twitter um, feed. Um, but it will disappear after that. So if you want your scopes to be around forever and for you to be able to repurpose them, um, you have to follow these steps so that you can make sure it's recorded on your device that you're using to do your scope. So the first thing is to uh, look in, in, within the Periscope app is to locate the three little people uh, where the right at red arrow is pointing to in number one. And then number two, once you hit that, it's going to bring you to the people section. And then you just click on your own profile icon and then click on settings and then other settings. And then you're going to find number four where the red arrow is pointed. You're going to see where you can just toggle on uh, auto save broadcast. So this allows for you not to have to remember or worry about recording your Periscope broadcast. It will automatically do it. And you're going to see an example of what it looks like at the end when you're done with the scope uh, a little further uh, down the line here. So this is a screenshot of what Periscope looks like. I took this screenshot the other day and apparently someone was doing in, 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 in Pennsylvania, somebody was uh, scoping live from a, a swap meet, <laughs> which I thought was funny. Um, so in order for you to begin your own broadcast to start scoping, you're going to click on the camera lens icon, and that's where that big rat, red arrow is pointing to. This is uh, the third icon from the left on iOS, and also uh, on Android, it's the red lens icon above the bottom navigation bar. Okay. So the second thing you're going to need to do, and this is pretty important, is to create a title for your scope. And this is a screenshot, the screenshot that I took uh, the other day, um, just of the outside, just so you, to give you some kind of perception of, of what, what everything looks like before you begin broadcasting. So I typed in, place your catchy title here. When you go in there, there won't be anything there. It won't say anything. Um, but you would come up with a catchy title. One of the tips that uh, we always tell people is to use all caps or use emojis. So just imagine that there's a, you, know, you go into Periscope and there, what did we say? There's 310 active monthly users. So 
at, at different times of the day. So if people are scrolling through what's going on live, you know, you want your, your scope to kind of stand out. So you give it a really catchy title. And if you notice, there's a, a blue arrow on this uh, slide, and it's pointing to a padlock. If you so desired to keep your uh, to keep your uh, information private to your only, um, but, but private meaning only to your followers, you would press the padlock. Okay, you would just click on that, and that would make only your followers uh, available to see your scope. Right, so. Why would you do that? Well, maybe, you know, you're just trying to give exclusive access. But I think the whole point of scoping is so you can increase your awareness with new audiences. And by doing that, you're kind of really closing things out. So um, use that sparringly, I would say that. So how do you start a scope? Uh, third, I, The third icon in the screen here where you were able to start your broadcast um, is allow, allowing you, your followers to comment or allowing everyone to comment. So if it's the way it looks right now, where it's not highlighted in white, it is where anybody can comment. If you were to click on that little button where the red arrow is pointing, then only the people that are following you, um, which if you're just starting out, probably not many people would be able to comment. So I would think that if you wanted to test the waters and do your first scope and not have to worry about comments because sometimes you can't control what comes in. So sometimes you might get somebody who says something inappropriate and, you know, that could be distracting. So what I would say you do is instead of, um, you know, uh, trying to deal with that is for your first scope, maybe just to have that as that on just to your followers. Cause that way you don't have to deal with it cause you don't have any followers on your first one. Right. So, um, and then uh, go, as you go, move forward, you know, leave that open. And, and there are ways to block people from your scope um, uh, when you click on their profiles. We're going to talk about that later. Uh, you can also uh, click the tweet icon on the screen and a link to your scope will be sent out to your connected Twitter account. So that's even more important now that you actually use tw your Twitter profile account to log in and to start your, your periscoping. So, um, and then that, that and later on, we're going to show you what that looks like. So lastly, um, in the start broadcast board, you're going to just go ahead and you're going to go for it, right? You've got all that other stuff done. You've got the title done. You've got everything. You figured out if you're going to be private or if you're going to have comments and you've decided you're going to tweet it. Now you're going to click the broadcast button. And when you do that, you're going to be live. So what needs to happen? Well, before then you need to kind of get yourself situated. How do you, how do you look? Uh, what environment are you in? You need to really pay attention to that and have that kind of thought about before. Um, if you're just going to show an exterior, then that's fine. But if you choose that you're going to uh, show yourself, if you want to just, if you're going to engage and watch comments come through and you want to look at yourself while you're looking at the, at the video, you, excuse me, at, at the, at the lens so that you can see yourself as everything's being uh, displayed and broadcasted, you need to switch to the front facing camera. And that part is a little tricky. Um, you got to, you know, try to do it quickly, be kind of smooth about it. Um, this is an example of a fellow who is using his front facing camera um, while holding, if you can see, he's, he's, he's holding out the, the phone and you can see that he had, he's actually has a camera to his face. So as soon as you click start broadcast, you need to switch to the front facing camera. If you're trying to show yourself, obviously, if you want to show the environment around you, then you just use the out, outward facing camera, right? The regular camera camera. Um, but all you need to do is double tap the screen and you should do this quickly and you'll be able to switch between the rear facing and the front facing camera on an iOS or Android device. You may also see a slight pause and I should, and, and this is, this is from uh, Periscope. They say you may see, you will see <laughs> a slight pause in your broadcast when this happens. So don't freak out. Um, and you're going to be able to do that. You can also zoom. So you can pinch to zoom. You pinched your screen while broadcasting. You can also swipe down to switch the camera with the camera icon. So that's a little bit more advanced. So we're going to talk about swiping down to stop your broadcast. And then there is that little switch. You can switch back and forth between front and back camera. But uh, for now, consider the uh, double tap to switch it around. And you're going to see it right away. Um, and there's just going to be a little bit of a break. And then everything's going to be good. So, and But again, Remember that it always starts off on the outside camera. So you kind of need to put, you know, if you don't want to show anything on that other side of your phone, 
um, on the that's not face that what you're facing, then you kind of put your finger over your camera lens on the back bef- before you hit start broadcast, and then you double tap, then release your you know, finger because it's okay. Everything's going to be in the front. So consider kind of having your hand over that back camera when you when you hit start broadcast. If you don't want to show anything until you double tap to show yourself, that's a good little tip. So how long should you scope for? This is a really, really important. Um, you can scope for as long as you like, but remember, poor, uh, the poor attention spans. Uh, poor attention spans are what's going to get you really, really uh, to a place where you're going to see people coming and going out of your scope, right? So you don't want to be on too long. I'd say if you have something really interesting, do it for 10 to 15 minutes. Maybe your first, first scope is only like, Five minutes, you know, just to see, get your feet wet. But most importantly, do the introduction at the beginning for the first 20 seconds. Um, another thing that I like to do is to, when you hit broadcast, um, start broadcast, it, there's that little lag time. So we're, because no one's probably going to be on right away. So either people are going to discover you and it's going to be like maybe 30 seconds in and you're going to start people, people are going to start joining you on your scope. So I always use that time to maybe thank people who are watching my replay. So, you know, thank you for watching the replay of this video. Um, it's really great. Thank you for joining me. Please go to my website or whatever. And then you kind of introduce yourself when you start seeing people join you. Cause you can see if you have the camera uh, using the front facing camera and you're looking at it, you can see people are joining you. So that's always a good tip. So how to share your scope? Well, it's really easy. We talked about using the tweet icon. So you could just click on that. um, And it allows you to, um, it really just posts exactly what you've put out there as your Twitter title, excuse me, as your scope title. So just make sure that that scope title is really good. So, and use that that tweet icon. And remember, it's really important now that you do that because people can watch your scope right within Twitter. So this is kind of uh, what a scope looks like when it's shared on Twitter, when you click that button. So this is one that was shared recently um, by Under Armour, and they were evidently showing a live event taking place, um, uh, some sort of uh, uh, athletic event. And if you, if you were to click that blue and white circle, uh, the play button, you'd be able to watch whatever it was, is happening in Periscope from Twitter uh, without having to uh, even your own Periscope account, which is something a year ago that could not be done. So this is great. Um, some uh, skeptics about live streaming are not that excited about some of Periscope's latest developments uh, on the app because there are so many other apps that are, on, app that are available on the market for people to do these things. But, you know, it's what are you going to do? This is, I, you know, it, it really does open you up to a new audience, especially if you have a lot of uh, Twitter followers and you've been nurturing your Twitter account over some time, which I hope many of you have been doing. So watching someone else's scope. So this is really easy. Um, once you're in, uh, this is an actual screenshot again of a uh, Periscope's app, their current app. Um, it's a one that I took on Saturday night and we'll talk about what's on that screen there. Um, but if you see that, that, uh, you see the click TV, that TV, uh, is your followers. So you can see who's that, who, who is currently scoping that you follow and you can look through that. And if you don't see anybody you like there, then you can go to the globe icon, the blue arrow, and you can see who around the world is scoping. And with either of these, you're going to see scopes from recent scopes that are within the past 24 hours. Because remember, Periscope videos disappear from Periscope. They don't save them into perpetuity. Imagine 310 million monthly users and these videos, you know, where would they go? What, what server would those go on, right? So they, got, they go away. They go bye-bye after 24 hours. So what you're going to be looking at is, is, is as recent as 24 hours. And once you find a scope that you like, just simply click on it to open the scope and, and join in. Now. Um, on Saturday night, uh, recently there was a, uh, Beyonce, but she had this huge premiere on HBO and I decided, so let me see what people are doing on Periscope. She has a huge following. What, what's going on on Periscope related to this? Well, what I found was this, uh, this individual, and this is an individual person was actually scoping their television. So 
6,926 people, as you see here, were watching this per this individual. This is not a celebrity, an individual person's scope of their television as they're watching Beyonce's premiere of her latest uh, album slash video content on HBO. Um, so literally, you could sit and watch. So if you didn't have access to HBO, you don't have a subscription, you could have watched the entire thing through this person's scope, which was actually pretty cool and much to the chagrin, I'm sure, of HBO because they certainly don't want that to happen. They want people to subscribe. But that's one thing that, that happens with Periscope. It gives people access to things that they normally wouldn't have access to. So how to show love on Periscope? Right? How do you show love on Periscope? Well, there's an easy way to do that. It's called giving hearts. And that green arrow is pointing to these lovely hearts. When you simply tap on the screen, if you like what a person is saying or what you see or you thought something was a great tip, you just click, you just keep tapping, tap, 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 and it'll give these all these hearts. And the hearts somehow correspond to colors that are associated with your profile. And that's all, I think, decided upon by Periscope. I don't think we have anything to do with that. But it's a great way to kind of boost your scope kind of cred um, because the more hearts you get the higher up you you go in the leaderboard so this is great and this looks like a scope from a broadcaster um, so this person just <clears throat> excuse me just had their their smartphone off to the side of them as they're actually doing a live broadcast in the studio um, and so this is something you know again this is one of those behind the scenes looks and you know when hosting your own scope and I think this is really important you need to ask your viewers to tap the screen to show their love. Just keep in mind that there are people joining Periscope every day and some of them may not know what to do. So you kind of, you know, help them along and say, you know, if you really like what I'm saying, you know, encourage them to tap. A lot of celebrities do that. A lot of really, um, let's call them Periscope celebrities, people who do a lot of Periscopes uh, all the time, they do a lot of tapping on there. So that's good. So commenting on Periscope. So here's an example of commenting. So you've seen that uh, this woman, she's got on some uh, like a GoPro type of device and um, people are looking uh, at her and, you know, she's uh, she's doing some sort of presentation on, you know, her Periscope and people respond to her. What is the helmet? Is it comfortable? Um, it's easy to comment with scopers. Um, just enter, you know, it's just enter your comment as shown uh, here uh, with 72 characters um, and if we look at the blue arrow, that's where you put it and it will appear on your screen. Now, if you are a very popular scoper and you get like a lot of people who join your scopes all the time, uh, they have something called the broadcast gets too full. I mean, there's just so many people, they kind of cut off commenting. So you can no, no, no one can no longer comment just the people who joined early enough in the scope, um, to can, can actually put comments in. So it'll give you that message that you see here, broadcast too full where the blue arrow is. So some people say if you really want to comment to this person, you can go out of the scope and come back and maybe it'll open, maybe, you know, maybe it's open up now. But, you know, if you just want to watch what the person's doing, just do that and tap if you like everything. Um, you can engage with your, when you're scoping yourself. And that, what we just talked about is what you do with other scopers. Um, now, if you want to engage with scopers and respond to their comments, just tap on the comment and hit reply. Now, doing this is going to be very disruptive to your scope if you're doing this, you know, it's live. So really, I suggest that you just answer questions verbally, right? You just speak it, you know, because if you're going to be typing, no one wants to see you typing unless you really have to do something that's private. And when you click on that person's comment, it opens up their, their kind of their little profile, their little, a small Periscope profile window. And you can also follow them there, do their profile. And then there's another little sneaky button there that says block. And sometimes you get somebody who, what they call trolls, they come on and they're just promoting whatever it is they want. They don't really care about your scope. They just want to do what they do. And those are people you can block from, from ever joining any of your scope, scopes again, right? So that's a, it's like a way of dealing with spam on scope, Periscope. So that's a great thing to remember is blocking users. So ending a Periscope broadcast is actually quite simple. To end the broadcast, you swipe the screen down and tap, as you see in the red, stop broadcast, and then you're done, right? But uh, one of the things I wanted to point out in this swipe down movement, when you swipe down on the screen to, to get this, you can also flip the camera around where you see that blue arrow. So this is an alternative to doing the double tap in the beginning. You can actually swipe down and hit the the, uh, switch the camera around. Now, if you do this, you got to be careful not to hit that stop broadcast because then you're going to, you know, that'll be a little confusing to get it started again and you got to do the new title and you don't want to do that. So, but that's just an option. And then on the 
right of that screen, you see what it looks like when you end your scope. That's what it looks like. It says uploading for replay. So that's in kind of it's, you, it shows you that your, um, your Periscope video, your broadcast is now uploading to your device that you're on. Okay. And if you see in blue, it says save to camera roll. So if you haven't set it up like we discussed earlier, that you could set it up so that you do auto broadcast, um, excuse me, auto recording, um, you can actually do it at this very moment at the end of your scope. You can hit save to camera roll. And this doesn't stay around very long. So if you're going to do this this way, you really need to um, do it when, it when you see it. Don't wait till later. And it gives you some statistics. You had 100% retention, this person. Total viewers were 16. Sometimes the total viewers is more at the end of the screen is more than what you actually saw. And I don't know why that is, but sometimes it shows up as more. It tells you how long you were on and, and, and the duration, the, the, the amount of time that people watched. So, uh, and that also kind of changes as the replays go on. So the, you know, the, the time watched and, and different things like that, all, all these different things change. And then after 24 hours, all this information goes away. So if you really want to save it, consider doing a screenshot using your phone and doing a screenshot to save your stats if that's something you want to keep track of. So the following um, uh, profiles is, is really uh, is not that difficult. Um, again, this is a screenshot of a, uh, the Periscope app uh, on an iOS device because that's what I use. Um, but if you click the icon of the three people in the bottom corner, you see that um, in the navigation bar, that little navigation bar with those four icons, you know, you're going to click that on Android. It's going to be at the top. Just keep that in mind. You can scroll through your Twitter followers that are on Periscope, which is where you see uh, the arrow that's kind of following on Twitter. So this means that the people that you already follow on Twitter, um, that, excuse me, that follow you on Twitter, they show up in Periscope. Does this mean that um, they're already on Periscope and they're using it? Maybe not necessarily, but it makes it easier to connect with people who are already familiar with your Twitter handle. Um, and of course, this is not going to happen if you've decided to uh, use your phone number to set up Periscope. So again, it's important to use your Twitter account to set up Periscope. And then um, the image on the right of that, it shows what it looks like if you were to double click on a, um, a person's profile in, in this area of, of the app and you get to see how many hearts they've received, if they have any recent videos, uh, excuse me, a broadcast, but you can double click where it says recent and watch their most recent broadcast. And then you can also see their followers and who they're following and you can even choose to follow them all in this one window. So five ways to engage on Periscope. So how about do a behind the scenes spontaneous video, right? That's a really cool way to, to get people uh, engaged because, you know, it's like exclusive access. Everybody loves that. You know, love it to spur of the moment sharing to show live behind the scenes clips in office tour, factory tour, um, just random thoughts, you know, as you're, you know, on your way to the gym. Uh, you know, as, you know, as long as people can see and hear you, you can do this anywhere. Um, these types of videos are great for showing your personal side. It really is a way to connect, right? And showing a lot of your, your personal brand and, you know, for getting the audience to emotionally invest in your business. That's, that's really crucial. That's something you really want. So consider that you can do live training. Okay. So if you are the type of business that actually offers uh, training and you have multiple locations and you don't want to kind of either fly people in or pay for expenses, you can now use Periscope to conduct live training. Do it in one place and show it to everybody else. Um, it's easy to do. Uh, all they need to do is, you know, know what time you're going to be on and you can tell them that. Uh, here's some examples of, of how different types of businesses can leverage um, live training on Periscope. Say, so a hairstylist who maybe wants to just promote what she does or kind of attract new employees would do a live hairstyling demonstration on, on Periscope. And maybe this hairstylist wants to boost more business for prom. So maybe it's a prom hairstyling. So, you know, that's one idea. Graphic designers can use it to do, to, to demonstrate a, a DIY graphic creation tool. Um, this is my favorite. Uh, you'll find there's a lot of people doing anything with food on social in general. Um, but now you're able to see chefs, and other home chefs, professional and home chefs and food bloggers, you know, demonstrating how to cook a certain dish or how to prepare something or, or dice or whatever it is, a technique. Uh, one of the first 
Periscope videos I watched a year ago when I was just trying to figure out what was going on with it was a gentleman, a regular guy, not a celebrity, not a chef, not even pretending to be a home chef, just a guy in a t-shirt, pants, in his kitchen, which wasn't all that nice, by the way, <laughs> uh, doing making a sandwich, and I think he was even washing dishes, and you can tell that he had his camera propped up on a, on a um, shelf, and he had like 500 people watching him. 500. He was just a regular guy. So that's pretty cool. Um, and also business, think of like business coaches and advisors could give daily tips or strategies for finding new customers or clients. So that's a really great way to use Twitter was with live training. So troubleshooting, you know, are you getting calls from customers asking the same thing or something they can do themselves? And it's something that you just honestly cannot charge them for. And you just want them to know how to do it themselves. Well, you know, tell them that you're going to be on you're doing a live Periscope stream on that very subject and provide them with the date and time and make sure that they know how to get in touch with you on Periscope. You know, make sure they know your handle and they, they're following you. Um, and then they can even ask questions. The other day I had a situation where I looked at my thermostat for my uh, central air and it said replace batteries. And I, you know, and to my horror, I was like, how do I do that? Um, so the first thing I do is uh, I went to, to YouTube and I watched a video and the gentleman was, who was a handyman who was doing the video. He said, I get this call all the time. How do I change the batteries in my Honeywell thermostat? Well, what a great way to even engage your current customers by, you know, maybe once a month, you know, if you, if you install a lot of one particular device, once a month, you host a live scope telling people how to work it um, uh, or how to remove batteries and things like that. That's a great way to engage uh, people uh, beyond their, their initial sale and perhaps maybe sell them on something else. So it's a great way to do it. Uh, you can enhance live events. I love enhancing live events with Periscope because you can bring people to an event that they couldn't get to themselves, right? So everybody does the video, you'll share a video later. You can take the video and then you share, you put it on YouTube, or put it on your website. But isn't it cooler to bring the live event as it's happening and unfolding to your audience? A great thing to do is if you're at a conference and you have friends who wanted to go or you're part of a networking group and you're at a conference and you want and, then, and you say to the networking group, look, I'm going to periscope uh, the, the last 30 minutes of so-and-so's presentation. If you guys want to join me, you know, and that's your way of contributing to the group. That's a really great way to do that. So you can enhance a lot of live events with that. I used it last year at a major uh, conference in Philadelphia um, where I was at the gala event and it was star studded and the attorney general was there and it was amazing. And I, and the, the comments I was getting from people were in different languages. They were, you know, people were saying it was cool and that, you know, they, because it was a place that they couldn't be. It wasn't, it wasn't a broadcasted event, so they couldn't watch it on television. Um, they, they weren't there, you know, or didn't have tickets. They weren't able to see it. So it was like, I was doing something nice for people, but it was really a cool moment. Um, and, People ask, was at, well, they were asking me questions and everything. So it's a really great way to enhance a live events that you're attending or your own live events that you're having. If you're having a ribbon cutting, you know, periscope it. Um, if you're if you're doing anything at your at your at your, your place of business, um, that's a live event that's open to the public, and you want to increase the amount of people that can see it, use periscope or other live streaming techniques. So. You can also do live product launches and you can create excitement around your an inside look at your new product or service. Ooh, promote your launch, uh, promote your, your launch scope in an advance by uh, using social and newsletters, your website. And when you're verbally talking to people, you say, Hey, I'm going to be doing a live uh, stream using Periscope or whatever of your app of your choice. And, you know, you give a date and time and make sure they know how to find you on, on the, and on your chosen app. And, you know, then they can see everything live. Um, a, a, a live scope of a brand new product or business announcement can serve as your official announcement. It's a great way to gain more followers and more people who could buy your goods and services. Um, one idea of this is like, think of it as like if you were a bakery and you have a wildly popular cupcake line and every six months you create a new flavor of cupcakes. Well, you can start live streaming the unveiling of the new secret ingredient that's in your latest cupcake flavor and just create that kind of that kind of edgy moments where people are like, Ooh, what is it? And, um, it just, it adds a level of excitement that typically isn't there, uh, that maybe you're excited, but maybe the customers are not. So this is a great way to make everybody, um, excited. So because like I said earlier, that live streaming is sort of a moving target. I felt there was need to, to, 
expand out a little bit more and talk about other tools that are available to you for live streaming. So blab.im is another live streaming app, which is very popular. Think of it as live streaming your own talk show, because this one allows up to four people to blab. And it's more of a talking head thing. It's really less of a, you know, show me where you're at, you know, live event type application. This is really a talking head. So if you wanted to do your own talk show, if you've dreamed of having your own show, you now can do this on Blab. It's a live streaming platform that's completely free, and uh, and it's a, basically a video conversation. Now, Blab is in beta because a lot of these companies are launched, and they're hoping that someone will acquire them. So they're kind of in beta. They're developing things as they can, as probably as funding is being available. But it's fully functional. You can totally use it. Um, you can a- access it now on PC and laptop browsers, um, and also by downloading the iOS app. Right now, it's not available on Android. But you know, in the meantime, you can access uh, Blab on a mobile device, uh, Android mobile device, using the Google Chrome browser on your phone, okay? And with this, all you need is a camera and a microphone, and you, and you can log in, guess what? Using your Twitter account. So use your Twitter login to log into Blab. It makes life a little, little easier. Um, and uh, these are, a lot of them are done seated. Uh, most people are seated, they're in their office. You can do it outside, I'm sure. Um, But like, again, it's less of kind of showing people what's going on in the world and more about chatting. Um, So if you want to get your own talk show, blab. So this is the new kid on the block, and it's called Facebook Live. This has launched with very much fanfare. It started off with uh, as a soft launch with celebrities only. So celebrities were only able to see uh, this particular app. Um, And... um, Facebook Live is unique in the way, in a sense that you are now, if you've been engaging on Facebook for years, right, and you've got all these people who you're connected to on Facebook, um, you can broadcast to them anytime you want, you know, and it'll show up in the timeline, they'll see it, they can watch it live, watch it later, Uh, and by the way, Facebook Live videos, they don't go away, they're there forever. Um, You can also download them and put them uh, in other places. Um, but it's real time live streaming, just like Periscope, um, just like Blab, except for this is, you know, you can do it on the go. Um, you have all the capable uh, capabilities of Facebook there with commenting and putting your emojis and, and all that good stuff. It really allows you to broadcast just to the people in your Facebook group if you want, um, which is really cool. So say you, you created a Facebook group to nurture for like, you've been nurturing it for like two years, but now you can talk to them and give them a uh, professional development training or introduce them to one of your products or services virtually. Um, and if you have a group where it's just your family members, um, now you can just broadcast to them, maybe, you know, dem- show uh, the, your, your, a child's communion or, you know, a bat mitzvah or a wedding. I mean, this, 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 it's endless, you know, live streaming allows you to bring people to your event who couldn't actually be there. And there are more than 10 times the amount of comments on Facebook Live uh, than there are on regular videos that are placed um, that are uh, placed on your on Facebook today. So, um, if you want more information, go to live.fb.com. It's right there on your screen. Live.fb.com for more information on how to get started on Facebook Live. It's it's really a, a, a recent addition to the live streaming space, um, and it's evolving. It will continue to evolve. Uh, apps will come and go. Uh, I've seen several apps that were uh, allowed people to actually record their uh, automatically record their periscopes, which was awesome. And it was, it gave you a file that would upload directly to YouTube. It was awesome. But that company announced this month that they're now closing down. I think they launched with the hopes that someone would actually acquire them, but it didn't happen. So, you know, now we're stuck with just saving our own scopes on our phone. Um, but, uh, Hey, Facebook Live has videos in perpetuity, so uh, check that out. So uh, one thing I really suggest that you do is to create anticipation with your videos. So when Facebook Live was made available to the masses, BuzzFeed, the uh, global network for news and entertainment, um, decided that they wanted to do something kind of just a curiosity video, live stream. And they had two of their employees uh, at a table, assumingly a lunch table, um, with a watermelon in white kind of outfits, as you see here. And they decided to place 
rubber bands around the watermelon and they'd see how many rubber bands it would take for the said watermelon to explode. Well, 44 minutes later, the video attracted more than 800,000 concurrent viewers and made watermelon a trending topic on both Facebook and Twitter. So you may not consider watching people place rubber bands on a watermelon, but when you watch this video, and I suggest you go find it, I'm sure BuzzFeed has it available on their site. You can probably find it on YouTube somewhere. Um, and actually, you probably should just go to the BuzzFeed's, BuzzFeed's Facebook page, and it'll probably be there. Um, you, it, is, it is sort of interesting, because, I mean, they got up to about almost, I think it was oh, around 700 rubber bands, and then it exploded. And that's an image that you see as a screenshot that I took of the video. That's the moment that it popped, like the, the entire watermelon burst open, and these people got, you know, they got smashed with uh, watermelon uh, juices. So, <laughs> and it was actually very interesting. And, and there were people in the, the staff was around. So it's, you know, it, it was like momentum. So there were 10 million views of this and over 320,000 comments on this one 44 minute now. We talked about 10 and 15 minute videos earlier, 44 minutes. But look how the m momentum and the anticipation of a watching a watermelon burst due to having almost 700 rubber bands around it. So here's some just easy advice for live streaming in general, not Periscope, not live, not, not, not Facebook live. Just if you're doing any live streaming, don't stream for the sake of it, you know, stream, uh, with a, with a purpose, you know, create a business case that demonstrates the value, right? Have a clear plan before you start your broadcast, you know, right? It's live remember. So you don't want to just get up there and be like, Oh, what was I going to say? You want to kind of have a th some thoughts. Don't script yourself because that's not going to be genuine not, and not, not authentic. You want to just have some, pull your thoughts together of how you're going to actually, um, display your information, talk about it and you know, where you want to go with it. Uh, use someone who is experienced in front of the camera in a live environment you know, don't grab someone, if you're trying to do something for your business, don't grab someone who's going to freeze up on you. You want somebody who's kind of cool and, you know, it's just, you know, it's going to make it seem real. Lighting. Make sure your light is behind the camera. And this is with video and with a, a regular, with a regular still camera. Um, always make sure that the light is facing your subject. So if you're, you, if you're going to be scoping yourself, Make sure that the you know the and, and you're gonna have say you're gonna have your um, your camera in front of you. The light should be behind your your camera, and uh, or your, excuse me, your phone. And uh, same with video and still. That's very important in modeling. They say find the light because the light it, 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 it illuminates your face. It makes you look good. If you if the light say you're standing outside and the sun is behind you as you're kind of scoping yourself, you'll be in silhouette. Nobody will be able to see you. So lighting is important. So just make sure you find the light. Make your face find the light. Give your stream a catchy title so users browsing on the relevant app will click on it, right? So we talked about that earlier. And also you want to, hey, and it's going to be just, uh, you know, you don't know who's going to, your own social followers are going to check it out too. Streams do need to go, do not do not go on forever, okay? We talked about that, except for in Facebook Live, which, you know, for now, they're allowing things to kind of stay there, but I don't know how that's going to, how long that will last either. We're talking a lot of bandwidth that they're going to need and a lot of server space, right? So, uh, sometimes a five minute stream is, is all you need. So don't let them go on forever. Make them slow. Um, I mean, excuse me, don't make them slow, make them quick, make them uh, engaging. You know, they do not need to go on forever. They do not get saved forever. A lot of things don't happen forever in live streaming. So just remember, you know, brevity is good and to always record and consider your background and, and your noise. Uh, make sure that, you know, you're not in a very noisy place when you're doing your scope, um, or your, or your Facebook live or your blab, uh, consider what, you know, what kind of, uh, interruptions you might have as you're doing your live stream. And most importantly, remember authenticity rules and, and be real, right? So the best part about live streaming is that it isn't scripted, right? So your video should feel spontaneous, right? And, 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 and rather than, than polished and just, so be prepared and not scripted. I said that earlier, be prepared and not scripted. And that's going to take you uh, really a long way with, with using uh, any of these live streaming tools. 
So if you're really confused about what's going on with live streaming or where you should be, is it a bright for you? You know, we're here to help at the Small Business Development Center at the College of New Jersey. Again, providing no cost needs assessment, marketing, whatever you need for Mercer County businesses. And if you happen to be on this scope and not in Mercer County, please go to njsbdc.com to find the nearest center in your market. And this is the contact information. I hope that everybody um, joins us for future events. You can always find those events on uh, the website, sbdcnj.com. And uh, also, you know, check us out on social and send us a note. So I'm going to take a look at some of the questions that we have. Um, let's see. Okay, so it says, one question I have is, is it possible to stream an existing pre-recorded video via Periscope? So one of the ways you'd have to do that is you'd have to have, you kind of have to do what the fella that was uh, showing the, the Beyonce uh, video, uh, excuse me, the Beyonce broadcast, because that was live on HBO at the time. Um, you'd have to show a screen for that. So um, there's no way to bring in the video from somewhere else while on your device, because it right now it's only... Periscope and these other apps are only taking videos that are being done live at that moment. So anything else that you want to show, including a, a pre-recorded video, would need to be on a separate device, and then you actually broadcast using your device, broadcast that device. So it could be a TV, a monitor, whatever it is. So then you could do it there. Um, that's the best way that you can get that done. And um, so if you, if it's YouTube, then have YouTube um, on your um, on your monitor, on your TV, um, and just point your point your, uh, your 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 smartphone or whatever device you're using to access your live streaming uh, app. Just point it there and, and hit play and let it go. You got to broadcast first, and then make sure that you're you know turn on your other device and let it roll. That's the only way right now to do that. Um, I can't you know maybe one day somebody will come up with this. Look, there's companies coming up with ways to do this stuff every day. So if you, um, you know, it's really great to kind of get in tune with what's going on and, and reading some of the some of the information that's out there. One of the, the places that I like to read uh, and take a note of this is called socialmediatoday.com. You'll find that there's some great articles on there and some of the latest, greatest information is shared there. Uh, join their newsletter list so you can get the, all the latest new, uh, articles that they put together. They also do some. Uh, I think they do some free uh, webinars and they also have some paid ones that come through there, but you can get, stay up to date on what's going on. It really is a moving target. Uh, these live streaming is actually a moving target. There are things happening all the time. A lot of these apps, they start up and everybody's excited and they go away. Last night, uh, preparing for this, I decided to read some of the, some of the uh, social media gurus that are out there that do this every day, all day long and only this. And, you know, they're saying things like, you know, you know, uh, you know, you know, it's, you know, today's the flavor of the month, you know, Periscope is down and, and you know, Facebook live is up. Um, you know, you, you do what you like. Uh, I will say that because Twitter owns Periscope, that's, that's good, solid, platform and I think that you can you can trust that that's going to be there it's the ones that are coming that are not backed up by a big company like Facebook or like or Google that might be a little scary to join because you don't want to have you don't want to invest too much time in something that's going to go away so that's one of the things I, I would tell everybody is to make sure that you all are paying attention to what's going on in the industry and just staying apprised and seeing what's hot and not jumping on everybody's bandwagon because you can't do it all folks only do what makes sense to you and what you have time to nurture and engage on. And with that, I will tell you that uh, we are, I'm so happy to have you uh, joining me on this presentation today. Thank you so much. Please, uh, before you go, please make sure that you take a look at those handouts. If you're listening to this live, uh, take a look at the handouts available in your control panel. And I'm going to leave you with this final quote. Uh, People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that's from John C. Maxwell, uh, author of Winning with People. And you can really win with people on live streaming. So I hope that you take some of the advice. And please, one of the things I think you all should do is when it's time for you to set up your Periscope is to watch the replay. Everybody who's watching this uh, live will receive a link to the replay, which will be available online uh, to watch. So thank you so much. And everybody have a great day.